welcome again this morning. Well, if you, if you know me a little bit, then you know that I really like uh, music. I love playing music. I love listening to music. I love to sing. I like to play uh, musical instruments. I simply love uh, music. And if I love music, that means I love songs. But when it comes to songs, I confess that what's more, most important to me in a song is not the lyrics, but the melody. So if the melody is good, I probably like the, like the song. But if only the words are good and the melody is not good, I typically uh, uh, don't like the song. But what that leads to is there's many songs that I'll sing throughout the day, and I just have no idea what the words are saying or even what they, what they mean. And I'm especially reminded of, of that around this time of year, of Christmas time, uh, when I'm you know, singing all these Christmas songs, I hear them in the stores, and very few times do I actually stop and think about you know, what are the words actually saying to the song. But this past week, I was thinking about the words to this Christmas song, uh, Little Drummer Boy. If you don't know the song, it's, it's most famous uh, because in the song, some of the lyrics are mimicking the sound of a drum, right? Bum, 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 bum. That's the, that's the part most people know of that song. But I was reading through the, the rest of the lyrics. Let me read them for you uh, without the rump up pum pums <laughs> And they go, come they told me, a newborn king to see, our finest gifts we bring to lay before the king, so to honor him when we come. Little baby, I am a poor boy too. I have no gift to bring that's fit to give our king, shall I pray, play for you on my drum? Mary nodded, the ax and lamb kept time. I played my drum for him, I played my best for him. Then he smiled at me, me and my drum. You know, when I read those lyrics this week, I was like, wow, this is actually a, a deeper song than, than I realized. I just knew the, the bump up up bumps. Because it's a song that asked the question, what could I possibly give to the God of the universe? What gift could I bring to him? What could I possibly give to someone who has everything? And the poor boy in the song says, look, I have nothing to give. I'm just poor. So he gives the one thing that he has, and that is his talent for playing the drums. You know, Jesus famously said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. But this morning, I would like for us to go deeper into that, um, because I don't think it just applies to money or to presence. I think it's bigger than, the, bigger than that. I think it touches on how we see the world. I think it touches on how we understand who God is and who we are in Christ. So actually, earlier this week, I had, you know, kind of this other sermon I was writing, and then I kind of kept coming back to this, so I kind of left that other uh, uh, a sermon for another time, and I thought we would just try to understand this, this verse and some other verses as well, is what does it mean that it's more blessed to give than to receive? So look at me at Acts chapter 20. Uh, we'll start in verses 33 and 35. The, the verses are there on your, on your, uh, on your lyric sheet. Now, you might be surprised to know that this verse is actually not in the Gospels, uh, but we find it in the book of Acts. So the Apostle Paul here is quoting uh, Jesus. We don't have this original quote from Jesus uh, in the Gospels, but it's a reminder that, that shows that not everything Jesus said and not everything that, that Jesus did was all captured in the Gospels. In the Gospel of John chapter 21, he, he says, hey, if, if we tried to capture everything Jesus said and did, we wouldn't have enough space in the world for all of the books. But we have this quote from, from Paul here. Let's look at uh, Acts chapter 20. Uh, let's start in, in verse 33 uh, for a bit more context. Paul says, I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. And all these things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said it is more blessed than to receive. 
So for a bit of the context, Paul is speaking to the elders in this church in Ephesus, and he's been talking to them about many things. Earlier, he talked about his ministry to them. Then he's warning them about false teachers. But at the end here, he says, look, I don't care about these material things. I don't care about silver. I don't care about gold. God has provided for me everything that I need. And I have worked hard so that you might have everything that you need spiritually. Besides, Paul says, quoting Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I think we see a lot just in this quote of Jesus here. Um, I just want to make a few, few points uh, 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 regarding what Jesus said, because as I said earlier, while the immediate context is about money, is about material things, I think we can extend it also into how we see the world and how we understand who God is. So looking at this quote from Jesus, it is more blessed to give than receive. I think the first point is, is pretty clear. Giving is a blessing. You know, around this time of year, uh, Shinga talked a, a, about this a little bit, there can be this, this stress as people get gifts or, or presents for other people that they love, and it can easily become this crazy, stressful time. But there is something good, there is something godly about giving to others. There's something good, there's something godly about being generous, about thinking of other people first. The problem with this time of year is that giving can easily turn into obligation. When people start to think, oh, this person's probably going to buy something for me, so I have to buy something for this person. And when giving turns into obligation, that's when it easily becomes a burden. But when giving comes out of the goodness of your heart, there is deep joy in being generous. Giving your money, giving your time, giving your talents from the goodness of your heart indeed is a blessing. But giving those things out of pressure or out of obligation or for any other reason will always be a burden. Right? The definition of a gift is something that is given willingly to someone else. Willingly, joyfully, not expecting something in return. Right? So giving is a blessing. Second thing we, we see here, that's maybe not as obvious, but I think it's there as well, is that you can only give what you have. This might seem obvious, but sometimes it's not. I can't give something I don't have. How could I? I might want to. I might wish I had more of something to give. But if I don't have it, I can't give it. And that might seem discouraging, but the truth is all of us have something to give. Let's go back to the, the, to the little drummer boy. right? He wanted to bring Jesus the best gift possible. But he was just a poor boy. He didn't have any money. But that didn't mean he didn't have anything to give. He still had something to give, and he gave Jesus the talent that God had given him, the ability to drum. And he gave that gift with everything he had. The lyric said that he played the best that he could. You can only give what you have, but everybody has something. Remember in the, in the Gospels when Jesus was, was watching people um, give money to the temple, he saw the widow come, she gave two coins, and Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, everybody listen, everybody listen. And it was a teachable moment for everyone there. He said that the poor widow gave more than any, everyone else, not because of the amount of money that she gave, but because she gave all that she had, while others gave from their wealth. Now, could that widow have been a receiver of financial help in that moment? Definitely. We can definitely read that story and think, hey, she shouldn't be giving, she should be receiving. But she was giving. She was giving everything that she had, and she was blessed that day. The Lord was pleased with her. The third thing I think we see in this verse is that we are called to give, but we're also called to receive. Right? Jesus didn't say that giving is good and receiving is bad. 
No, if you read this verse, you can see that we're called to give and to receive. There is blessing in both. There's just more blessing in giving. But there's still a blessing in receiving, isn't there? Giving is a part of life, but receiving is a part of life too. The person who gives has to give it to someone. Someone has to take it. Someone has to receive it. So the truth is we should do both. We should give and receive. The problem is, is when we get, let's say, out of balance with these things, these two things, right? You shouldn't only receive, right? There are some people who only receive but never give. Again, the context of this verse is money, but we could extend this into many different things in life because this, I think, impacts how we see the world. So if our mentality is always, what do I get out of it? What's in it, What's in it for me? That's not a good mentality. That's only a receiving mentality. Whereas Jesus himself said that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In other words, Jesus' mentality was not, what do I get out of this? It was, how can I help? How can I serve these people? How can I help the situation? The truth is, is if you only have a receiving mentality, you're going to use people up, right? And let's be honest, you're going to probably have a pretty joyless life because you're missing out on the blessing of giving, right? Jesus said there's a blessing in receiving, but there's more blessing in giving. We're called to receive. There's a blessing in receiving, but you were not only called to receive. Look with me at Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 3 and 4. It says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped. Right? So we're not supposed to consider ourselves first, but consider others first. We are called to have the same mindset as our Lord, as Jesus. So we're called to give, and we're called to receive. Receiving without giving is bad. But I think there's a second part of this, too. You shouldn't only give. In the same way, if all the time you give, but you never receive, that's out of balance, too. I think there's a couple of of obvious reasons for that. One is, is that at some point, you will get burnt out. If you always give and you never receive, you're going to get tired. You're going to get weary. This happens a lot of times in churches. People give their time. People give their talents to a ministry. They keep going. They keep going. They never stop and let other people help. And eventually, they just get burnt out and, and stop. It might seem noble in the moment, but in the end, it's, it's not sustainable. It can be easy to spiritualize this and think, okay, I'll just keep going. I'll just keep pushing. But God never intended for you to only give. He intended for you to receive as well. Giving without receiving is out of balance, and it's not sustainable. But here's the bigger problem with always giving. And the truth is that we all need help sometimes. We all do. But if you only give and you never receive, you're blocking the very help that could keep you going. And what's the main thing that stops us from getting help? It's our pride. Sometimes we think, you know what, this is tough, but I can do this. I'm strong. I can get through this, right? I, 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 me, me, me. Our pride blocks us from receiving. Our pride stops us from getting help. And let's be honest, it's hard to ask for help, right? It's humbling to to admit that we need other people's help. But we know that God never intended for us to do this life on our own. This is one of the reasons God gave us the blessing of the church, to help each other, to support each other, to, to lift each other up when it's hard. 
God gave us a means of getting help, but sometimes our pride blocks us from using that help. But all of us need help. As I said earlier, the person who doesn't receive help and just gives and gives, that person's going to burn out. We all need help. We all need to receive sometimes. And I think there's two levels, I would say, to, to receiving help in our lives. The first level, I would say, is accepting help. Right? This is when you're doing something or going through someone and someone comes to you and, and offers to help you. So you're not asking for help, but they're offering to help. Maybe they notice something. They notice you're having a hard time, that you need something. And I think the thing I've learned is if someone offers to help, let them help. <laughs> Sometimes we might think, oh, they're just offering to be nice. And maybe that's true. But usually it's not. If someone is offering to help you, let them help you. It took a long time for me to learn this. I think I'm still learning this. You know, I love, people ha I, I love having people over at our home uh, for a meal. I love having uh, uh, big groups over. So typically, you know, my wife uh, typically cooks, and I'm kind of the one who cleans up the dishes and picks up. And in the beginning, at the, the end of some of those meetings, people would offer to help me with the dishes or, or picking up. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, they're just being nice. So I would refuse. I would just reject their help. I'd say, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, I'll do it. But then there I am at 2 a.m., still cleaning, still picking up, right? They were asking to help. I just wasn't accepting it. But by God's grace, at some point, people just stopped listening to me. And they would just start helping. They would just start cleaning. And it was such a blessing to me. I actually went to bed on time. And it made it more fun to host people. The help was there the whole time. The problem was me. I just wouldn't accept it. So that's one level of receiving help. I think the other, uh, other level of receiving help is asking for help. This is even more difficult than accepting help, right? Asking people for help. Sometimes people don't know we need help or that we need something, and we have to ask people to help us out. And this is extremely humbling because our pride tells us, don't do it. Don't ask for help. Just figure it out. But again, we're called to give and we're called to receive. And people can't help us if they don't know that we need help. How can we help if there's no one there to receive it? There's going to be times in lives where we are in a position to give help. That could be financially. That could be with our time, with our talents. And there's going to be times in life when we're, in, when we're in a position that we need help. And that's normal. That's okay. There's no shame in that. But many times our pride can, can stop us from asking for that help. But that's not how God designed us. There's no shame in that. The whole context here in Acts, Acts chapter uh, 20 is Paul says we must help the weak. And the truth is we're all weak at times. There's many times reading the New Testament where the Apostle Paul received help. There's no shame in that. That's how God designed the church. When Jesus talked about prayer, he said, you don't have because you don't ask. But the same thing could be true about uh, help in our lives. We don't have help because we don't ask for help. You know, maybe this morning that's you. You need help. You're in this moment and you feel like you are drowning. You feel like you are doing everything on your own. Could it be that God has put people in your life right now to help you? They just don't know that you need help. We can try to do this life on our own, but we were never meant to. It's not sustainable. Don't just give, give, give. Receive as well. Accept help and ask for help. So in Acts, we see this giving and receiving. Something is going uh, uh, in and something is coming out, in and out, right? Giving and receiving. But I think there's an idea here that's missing from these verses in this whole giving and receiving, and that is the concept of keeping, right? These verses don't say anything about keeping. 
So what should we say about keeping? Well, the fourth, fourth thing I would say is that keeping can be dangerous, right? From the rest of the Bible, this idea of keeping is, is a dangerous one. Remember the story of, of the rich young ruler. He was very rich. He had many possessions. He comes to Jesus. He says, what good deed must I, 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 need, I, I do to have eternal life? Jesus says, you need to keep all the commandments. This man says, done. I've, I've done all of them. Jesus says, okay, then just sell everything you have and, and give it to, to the poor and, and follow me. Jesus didn't ask the man to sell everything and give it to the poor because Jesus needed the money. It wasn't about the money. It was about this young man's heart. Jesus was showing him where his true treasure was. As much as this man cared about eternal life, he seemed to uh, be storing his treasure on heaven or on earth rather than in heaven. And of course, at the end of the story, the young man goes away sad. So there is blessing in giving, there's blessing in receiving, but I would say keeping can be dangerous. Last thing I would say about this verse, and that is simply giving and receiving is the story of the gospel. In Matthew chapter 2, the the wise men traveled to, to Bethlehem to see the newborn king. So King Herod, the king at that time, gathers some teachers and, and priests together to find out what, what's, who's this king being born. And they tell him this quote from, from Micah, from the Old Testament. And it says there will be a ruler uh, coming from the town of Bethlehem. But it won't be a typical ruler. It will be a, a king who shepherds the people of Israel. This won't be a, a tyrant, but this will be a kind and giving shepherd. Of course, later in John chapter 10, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. So the ruler, the king, will come from a small town called Bethlehem. And we know that this king was was Jesus, who came into this world as a servant. Back to Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. It says, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not uh, uh, count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by, com- by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The king of kings came into this world as a servant. Jesus could have kept everything he had, right? Couldn't he? He could have kept his rights. He could have kept his status. He could have kept his life but it's more blessed to give than to receive. So he gave those things away. He gave away his rights. He gave away his status. He gave away his life. He didn't just throw those things away. He gave those things away as a gift to you and to me so that you and I might receive them. Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but it is a gift of God. When it comes to salvation, when it comes to being born again, when it comes to being forgiven, the Bible says we have absolutely zero, nothing, zilch to give. We can't give anything to God to be saved. All we can do is believe. All we can do is Receive. It's a gift from God. It's not from us. In this sense, when it comes to being saved, the blessing is in the receiving, receiving this gift of salvation from Jesus Christ. You know, during this time of year, there are many gifts and presents that are given and received, but don't miss out on this greatest gift of all, that the God of the universe came down so that you might have life. As I said last Sunday, Jesus did indeed come into this broken world, but that's incomplete. Jesus came into this broken world so that he could come into your life, so that he could heal and restore the brokenness in our lives. He gave so that you could receive. You know, I heard someone say once that the holidays tend to reveal what's inside of us. 
Meaning because it's such a, a full time with, a, with events and things happening, what's inside of us tends to come out during the holidays. So if we're all stressed, if we're all afraid, fearful, that really comes out during this time of year. Or if you're a jealous person, then the holidays will bring that part out of you when it's time to open presents. Hey, why did, why did he get that? Why didn't I get that? What? Right? Or if you're selfish, then it's, it's going to come out when you realize, hey, everybody's uh, uh, getting better things than me or whatever. The holidays can actually show us what's inside of us the rest of the year. And sometimes that can be kind of ugly. But it doesn't have to be. In the same way, it could be a time for our generosity to come out. It could be a time for our grace to shine through. It could be a time for our love to pour out. Or that peace that Jesus has given us, given us to, to reign and to shine in the people we know. Instead of revealing the, the ugly parts of us during this time of year, what if the fruit of the Spirit was revealed during this time in our lives. You know, it's true what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And it all comes down to how you see the world. Let me ask you this morning, when is the last time you gave? Maybe you gave someone money, gave someone your time, Man, it's such a gift in our, our modern world today just to give someone your attention. <laughs> There's so many distractions in our world, but just to, just to listen to people, talk about their lives, talk about what they're going through, ask them questions, to be curious. When's the last time you gave someone your full attention? And for those of you who give, give, give all the time, going, 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 when's the last time you received When's the last time when someone offered to help you that you said, okay, or even better, when's the last time when you realized you, you needed help, you actually asked for help? When is the last time you received? Because you need both. There's blessing in both. There's blessing in the giving. There's blessing in the receiving. There's just more blessing in the giving. So as we enter into this time of the year when people are with their families more or, or there's maybe stress and pressure, I pray that what comes out of all of us is a giving attitude, willing to help, willing to ask for help from each other. You were not meant to do this life alone. Thank God for the church. Thank God for his people to support us to do this life with us. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminder of the blessing to give and to receive. And God, we're not just talking about things. We're, we're talking about our attitudes. God, we pray that we would see ourselves as servants instead of seeing ourselves as people to be served. God, we don't want it to be about us. We want it to be about you. God, you blessed us not just so that we could be blessed, but that we might be a blessing to others. So God, help us to do that. And God, we confess it can be so hard sometimes to, to receive as well, to ask people for help, to accept help. But God, we have no help because we don't ask others for help. God, and that's just pride and and we want you to take that from us. So God, let this time of year for us be a time of giving, but also receiving. Understanding that we receive the most precious gift from you in salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.